were at the Pacific Palisades in Southern California for a visit with a, uh, a former Chicagoan who made uh, quite a name for himself in, <laughs> in our windy city. Ed Prentice is here, <laughs> and uh, we're pleased to be here, Ed. Well, it's certainly nice to have you here, too. Ed, you started in radio. Was it in Chicago? It was No, it was in uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Uh, I started as an announcer out there on a little 200-watt station, and mm-hmm. uh, I... Uh, I finally decided one time, well, I'd take a chance and go into Chicago and see what could see what could happen. And fortunately, why uh, everything worked out very well for me. What exactly was your your uh, transition from Cedar Rapids to Chicago? How, what where did you? I was an you announcer out answer? there, and uh, well, in those times uh, there were no agents, mm-hmm. and uh, you went to the advertising agencies and the stations, and uh, you introduced yourself to if some. Station was having a show. Well, you entered one in and t- tried to meet the director and introduce yourself, and maybe he'd call you for an audition. Maybe he wouldn't, <laughs> but mm-hmm. that's the way it was in those days. Was that hard to do? I mean, was it hard to get a uh, an audition with a, no, a director? No, no, it wasn't because uh, they were. Uh, uh, well, I was fortunate, I guess. I I, I didn't uh, have any problem at all, and uh, uh, I started right to work uh, right away with uh, as soon as I got in. As a matter of fact, about the. Uh, Third day in Chicago, I, I did a, a, a voiceover thing, and uh, which, well, listen to me, voiceover. I'm keep thinking about <laughs> TV. Right. right. <laughs> well, were you? Did you get a job as a? Was it a one-shot job on a on a on an individual program, or was it a, a series? I have, or, I have, uh, I've kind of forgotten. But uh, there, there were then there were shows that uh, that uh, I worked like uh, uh, Guiding Light, and Ma Perkins, mm-hmm. and. Uh, uh, today's children and uh, quite a few of the, uh, as they were called, soap operas in those days. You, um, being a former Chicagoan, obviously were uh, and still are a member of the the Bridges Up Club. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, <laughs> we have luncheons out here. Uh-huh. There's a group of us that uh, meet and get together, and uh, it uh, we have a lot of fun because we talk about old times and things that uh, happened then. That and lots of times that bridge was up, and uh, <laughs> but we use it as an excuse mostly. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you ever get, did you ever get delayed from a broadcast because of the bridge being up? Yes, yes, uh, we we did uh, because uh, uh, sometimes you'd strike it lucky and you'd get over uh, going from NBC to um, the Wrigley Building, CBS. Mm-hmm. Well, if you went one way, you could go. Uh, uh, Two ways. If you we went one way, you'd be lucky, and uh, until you got over to to cross on Michigan Avenue, maybe the bridge was up there. But <laughs> it didn't often happen because mm-hmm. you you got pretty smart after a while, and you left in plenty of time, so you wouldn't. <laughs> you were mostly a, 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 most of the radio people in those days. Now we're talking about uh, around the early forties, uh, maybe what late thirties, right, right, somewhere right, in there. Thirty eight, thirty nine, forties. Most most of the people in those days were were what. I suppose was called then, and it's still called freelancing. Definitely, right. definitely. Except there were staff announcers. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yes, but uh, uh, most of the, the, uh, the there were no staff actors. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so, uh, in other words, and if if you did announcing too, or well, you uh, and and acting, well, naturally you didn't want to join any particular station because you'd be. Uh, in a way, stop from doing a lot of other things that you might have mm-hmm. the chance to do. But one station rarely had a, 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 a company of actors, anyway, did they? Uh, there, were, there was no, uh, no. Uh, they uh, there was no station that uh, that uh, had a, a. If a station had a uh, a show, uh, it uh, they called they called actors from all uh, from from all over Chicago. I mean, there, mm-hmm. there, there were there was no particular. Group of actors that worked any particular station. They worked all the stations. W- if you if you were doing a guiding light uh, program, if you were a regular character on, on the guiding light, for example, and you were I got the part fact, of Ned Holden on the guiding yes, light for years. For many many years, I think. Yeah. There, uh, how would you know of a uh, a job opening up on another series or another soap opera, for example? How would you get wind of that? Was there a uh, a, a casting call was there casting directors or did you just was it word of mouth or what? No, there there were there were it was just word of mouth mm-hmm. usually. Uh, we'd we'd hear about it and uh, and uh, you meet somebody in the uh, uh, having a martini in the Wrigley bar or something. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> somebody say, hey, did you hear about uh, such and such a show? So, oh, who's directing it? Oh, so and so. Hmm. 
uh, where can you get in touch with them? You know, and that was uh, the way a lot of it uh, went. Of course, uh, uh, the advertising agencies uh, then finally, uh, for a while, you see, the networks controlled everything, and mm-hmm. uh, they either had to. You couldn't take a new idea uh, to uh, to an advertising agency or a sponsor unless the networks agreed to put it on. But that was bad because it stopped a lot of new things. And the minute the advertising agencies came into the picture, then people with ideas came to them because they knew that, for example, that uh, uh, this particular advertising agency had P&G. How do, you, how do we get to P&G with this show idea? Well, the advertising agency would do it. Mm-hmm. Now, that's it's very interesting because... For many years, late in the late 40s, I'm sure, the, the hue and cry was, if we could only get these shows away from the control of the advertising agency and, and to the networks, why we'd be able to have, we would not have that, uh, the pressure from the sponsor. I don't, uh, I don't, uh, I don't recall that ever, uh, ever, fe- that, that feeling, uh, because uh, uh, the, uh, well, there might have been, but I, I just I don't I don't remember that type of thing. Well, you said you said when the networks control the programming, you as an actor or anyone with an idea had a harder time getting it across. That's right. That's right. And the sponsors were much more receptive and more responsive to the audiences, I would imagine. Well, the networks mm-hmm. found out, you see, that that when that, that a lot a lot of new ideas came in, and then they did open up mm-hmm. to ideas that, that came into them. But there again. Uh, what do you do? You, you, if you've got an idea and the network says, hey, we think this is great, it goes on sustaining. Where's the sponsor? So you still have to go to the advertising yeah, agency. That's right, yeah, that's right. When you were working uh, the, the Guiding Light, for example, that was a regular... You were on there for a great many years. That's you right. Uh, you, did you have to do that program more than once a day for the... For no. the was it a West Coast no, and East Coast no, broadcast? No, it, it would be recorded. Those things were all always... Uh, if you had a, a later time for the West, mm-hmm. it was always recorded. Oh, they played, they played the recording of yeah, it then. Yeah, yeah. So then you were free to do other programs at the Definitely. same time. Well, no. Uh, not at the same not moment. The, not at the same day, but. You couldn't, you, you well, didn't do work more than Guiding Light in one day for you? Oh, oh, yes, you could, uh-huh. as long as it wasn't the same time. I mean, that, yes, yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you could do, uh, uh, well, you couldn't do more than, than maybe a, a couple, two mm-hmm. things, because you had rehearsal of an hour and a half for a 15 minute show and then you're 15 minutes so uh, and you uh, might do maybe if you were fortunate to do maybe one in the morning or and, or one in the afternoon but you, it was pretty if you had a running part you had to be very careful about what you took that might interfere didn't with didn't want it. a conflict on that's something. right I that's see, right yeah. now one of you, you were involved for so many years in the soap operas but you were involved for perhaps even more years in the uh, the adventure shows, the uh, the after school radio, and in fact you were Captain Midnight. That's right. That's uh, right. I look around your home here in the Pacific Palisades and don't see any uh, <laughs> Ovaltine <laughs> jars anyplace. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, no, that's that's very true. But uh, there's a lot of a lot of wonderful memories of uh, of the uh, Captain Midnight show. Did that come out of WGN in Chicago? That came that came out of WGN in Chicago. Now there was a regional broadcast of Captain Midnight for Skelly Oil for some time before. Yeah. Were you involved in that series? Yes, yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, yeah. And then it started kind of from the beginning again as that's it, when right, it went on the right, uh, yeah. m- was it mutual, wasn't that's it? That's right, that's right, yeah. How did you how did you land the role of Captain Midnight? Went in an audition for it. They had a bunch of actors. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. And you and sounded uh, just... Yeah, well, that's uh, <laughs> just happened to have the, the voice that they wanted. And uh, so uh, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, uh, it, it really was. Was there more or less rehearsal time for, for you, for a Captain Midnight show, for example, where you were the lead character? Uh, no, uh, they, you, you had a different script every day, of course, and uh, your sound effects, and you had the same time rehearsal, and then you did a... a uh, 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 they made a recording of that show too, and uh, so uh, it was uh, no more rehearsal for me than because it was a story angle, and uh, uh, wh- whatever part of the, uh, the story you were in, well, that's that was all all rehearsed uh, the same, not about an hour and a half rehearsal. How long did you stay with Captain Midnight? 
Ah, uh, let me see. I was with uh, the show about uh, up until 1951. I went to New York in 1951. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I'd say about uh, six, seven years, somewhere in there. Oh, I think I think the uh, the network broadcast for Ovaltine started about 1940, so uh, probably were longer than the six or seven years. Well, actually. that's right. I, I, yeah, I've forgotten. Yeah, that's yeah. very true because yes, I was on that with Ovaltine. That's that's very true. Did, how far in advance did the scripts? Uh, come out did, uh, maybe as as the actor we, we never saw the scripts until we went down so you the went, rehearsal. went down there yeah. and we were they were they pretty much complete oh yes at that, the time you got it no last minute rewrites or never like no no uh, there was a, always a lot, a lot had to be cut because of time we mm-hmm. re- read it once for time and uh, then uh, uh, many most often uh, the, the parts of the script had to be cut and uh, that was of course the director's mm-hmm. job mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What kind of mail did you get at, from the audience well, on a yeah. show like that? Well, um, most of it was uh, uh, really not not too much because a lot of the kids that listened to it uh, they they didn't write you know it wasn't like a for example a soap opera you'd have uh, adults listening to mm-hmm. it. But uh, a lot of the young people, uh, they would if we had a if we had a, a giveaway or an offer or something. Well, then they you know they, they were right in. <laughs> well, the secret decoders, and yes, they, oh, all that sort of thing. Oh, absolutely. that must have been tremendous response. Oh to those yes, things. oh yeah. Well, they they would write in for something like that. That's very true. But just ordinary uh, things about the show, uh, there wasn't too much. Of it. Did you get much fan mail then on as uh, being involved with the soap operas? Quite a, quite a bit of uh, fan mail, uh, and uh, uh, most of that. Uh, however, most of that would go uh, to the advertising agency and, and to the sponsor, unless it was something that directly mm-hmm. uh, concerned uh, oh, I you as as the uh, as the actor. If it was addressed to you, you always got mm-hmm. it. But they would hardly ever know the, who it was, right? That's right. Because uh, in for in most of those years, the actors. Seldom got credit on the show. No, no, even that's even right. uh, just as a a bunch of names at the end of the show. They the never only got the only shows that uh, that they got credit on, for example, would be like on the first night of the show, mm-hmm. where the announcer would uh, uh, on on that type of show. But uh, uh, unless they they read the papers, uh, Ma Perkins, uh, they didn't know who who did the parts on that or Guiding Light or mm-hmm. Today's Children. Unless they read the radio columns, and there'd be an article, maybe they would mm-hmm. mention. Or the fan magazines, the, the radio the fan magazines, magazines would have right. articles about the. That's right. Yeah. About that sort of thing. Yeah, that's that's true. Did did you 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 mentioned the first nighter? Now that was a major network uh, uh, show de- from Chicago, de- and you worked on that uh, frequently. I, I did uh, for a while. I did Mr. First Nighter, mm-hmm. who uh, introduced the shows and what have you. And then I also did, after that, I also did acting jobs, uh, leads uh, on, uh, not, uh, Les Tremaine, uh, by the way, was, mm-hmm. uh, was uh, one of the leads on uh, First yeah. Nighter. Yeah, o- Olin Soleil o- Olin and Soleil, Barbara yeah. Luddy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I should say so. That probably brings back a lot of memories. When you did a show like that, uh, as opposed to a program, for the uh, the soap opera or the, the right. kids' uh, adventure show, that required uh, a greater amount of rehearsal time, I would assume. Yes, because you had an orchestra with it, mm-hmm. and uh, your, your uh, bridging of the, the drama with the music and the timing of mm-hmm. all those things. Uh, uh, I've f- forgotten exactly, but I think uh, I think sometimes it was around two two hours or two uh, two and a half hours, mm-hmm. something like that. Rehearsal. Mostly again the same day. Yes. Same day. Yes. Yes. We'd never yes. bring. Never, it. never. No, we never never got together to read the script. Without mm-hmm. the rehearsal, meant everything. I mean, uh, music and uh, sound effects. That's how professional all of you people were. You just pick had, up the script and be. you go right in there. That's, that's right. And, and you did it. <laughs> and right. and uh, you you needed to uh, put on a really a show for the audience, the studio audience too. Correct. Oh, definitely. The uh, the announcer of the show would uh, uh, speak to the audience and he'd and tell them what uh, when he gave them a cue uh, for applause and, mm-hmm. uh, and mm-hmm. what have you. And uh, the fading of down that and the fading up of the music and uh, all of that. Uh, yes, they uh, everybody uh, realized that they were uh, really uh, more like a stage show. It was more, people felt more 
like they were on the stage mm -hmm. or, or in a film or something. And the actors uh, had to dress formally for the broadcast. That's right. That's right. Everybody, uh, yeah, they was... Uh, and uh, we never mentioned uh, alcohol or uh, cigarettes uh, in any of the scripts. I mean, it was... Uh, Nobody was uh, drunk. No, or, no nobody. No, no. no. Uh, they, they, people were uh, in life, but I mean, it was <laughs> not. Uh, it's not, a fantasy not, land. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. But it was all good, clean, wholesome entertainment. That's right. I mean, uh, it was. Uh, it was so different than uh, some of the things that uh, we have today. It seems as though that, that everybody's searching today for somebody that's in a bad situation that they can mm -hmm. that they can report on. Looking for troubles. Looking for yeah. trouble, but yeah. we didn't do that then. The the uh, the soap operas or daytime dramas were 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 pretty melodramatic in those days, but they the and the the content was uh, well, it was supposed to mirror real life. Uh, it may right. have to some degree. But it certainly didn't uh, deal with all the sordid uh, topics that that you find on the television and oh, soap operas oh, today. Oh no, no, no! It, uh, it, uh, but people, people after they uh, they got interested in one particular show, they they would really follow uh, follow the sequence because they want to know what happened to those performers, and they got to pretty much to believe in it. Mm -hmm. It was it was that type of thing, and it was a it was a re relief to a lot of women who uh, they said, "Oh boy, I can." Quit cleaning up house now and sit down and listen to my favorite <laughs> show. <laughs> well, also you could continue to do what you were doing while you were listening to those shows on that, radio. That, that, as that's as right. opposite uh, television, you almost have to to watch it. Absolutely, you're right. Although I think today on TV, some of the the movement is so slow that you don't have to watch the picture. Uh, it's kind of replacing the uh, the audio uh, void from uh, the radio that's uh, right. soaps too. That's right. Yeah. Now I remember as a kid coming home, racing home from school to listen to those uh, gongs that opened the uh, Captain, Captain Midnight, Midnight show, yeah, and, yeah, and, uh, and all the excitement. And uh, every time the Captain Midnight and the <coughs> excuse me and Chuck were uh, uh, working on a secret decoder there to uh, oh, to foil oh, Ivan oh, Shark. Sh oh sure, <laughs> I've, I've still got one of them around somewhere. Have you? <laughs> Well, the one that you had was always the newest one, and I always had last year, so of course I had to go for the Oval Team. <laughs> oh, sure. And, and send uh, in for the new one. And then, of course, another great show was Jack Armstrong and uh, some of the other. Well, now you you played a supporting role in that from time to time. Once in a time, while, right? yeah, but never while uh, midnight. No, I, I, no, I never worked any other kid shows. Uh, Basically, Captain Midnight. That was that uh, was enough. It's one. Oh yeah. In the history of radio, it is. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, well, I think when people, when think when people think about uh, the great kids shows, I think they they often and most often mention Captain Midnight, I Little think, Orphan Annie, yes, and Jack Armstrong. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah that's true. Yeah, yeah at uh, one time before I got the uh, job on Midnight, I worked on Orphan Annie too. Did you? Yeah. Uh huh. And uh, oh. I, it was a great, uh, great time, and I, I, I kind of miss it. There was one before we started our our taped conversation. You were you referred to you mentioned something about a, a specific Captain Midnight script that seemed to uh, uh, precede a real life incident. Oh, oh, uh, yeah, that was um, what was that? Uh, something about Pearl Harbor. Oh, uh, yeah, I. Uh, no, no, I think what you're talking about was uh, I had the line uh, in, in Captain Midnight one day that uh, was, uh, what we need here are some good mop-up operations. And uh, the actor working with me, Mike Romano, was supposed to come in right afterwards. That's what I like, mm -hmm. a man with a quick tongue. So rehearsals went, well, no, no problem at all. And we got on the show and I got to the line and I said what we need here is some good mop -up 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 -up. I couldn't get off of the thing <laughs> and Mike trying to cover up my mistake comes in with that's what I like a man with a quick tongue but <laughs> of course the guy I felt so sorry for was Pierre Andre who was the announcer uh -huh. on the show <laughs> I don't know how he ever came in to finish it but he did because <laughs> <laughs> he knew what the joke was that's right <laughs> and then uh, we all uh, <laughs> Went over to the Wrigley Bar, 
to listen to the the second show. So, <laughs> oh, it was so funny. <laughs> To listen to the rebroadcast of it. But boy, it? believe you, believe me, that in those days uh, there was no, uh, uh, no more, nowhere near the amount of drinking and what have you that uh, there is today. And a lot of things, and we didn't have any smoking of marijuana or any of that mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. So everybody was pretty much on their toes. Well, you had to, you had to do what you, uh, you had to do in order to survive because. That's right. uh, in some, I can't. I, I'm trying to think now. When did uh, Afra come in uh, to kind of protect the uh, I, the I'm uh, sorry, actors? I it was probably uh, early '40s. So, so you, yeah, yeah. there was a time when you were probably taken uh, advantage of by the uh, the producers and the, and oh, yes. the, the networks oh, and all that. Oh, Give sure. you oh, yeah. almost next to nothing just yeah. to do all this. Uh, oh yeah. But as others have told me, everybody was young and eager in those days, and were glad to do it all. That's huh? right. That's right. It was fun. I mean, uh, it, plus the, what you received in pay was uh, also the enjoyment of mm -hmm. of doing it, and it was. Fun. Did you did you uh, uh, socialize much with the other other radio people? Oh yes. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. We uh, always got together. Uh, uh, well, practically with everybody. I mean, there was always a parties of some kind mm -hmm. on weekends or something like that and uh, and everybody that uh, uh, you always so associated with your cast I mean like on Guiding Light uh, we uh, we always got together uh, a group and uh, yeah there was there was it was a great uh, great camaraderie and uh, feeling of uh, of uh, fun Every, everybody uh, uh, you never heard anybody talking against anybody else or anything like that it was mm -hmm. all uh, a, a really great uh, time of uh, of uh, entertainment. You were in Chicago then for maybe a dozen years uh, over this period of time. Where about where about did you live? Well, I lived uh, on the near north side for a while, and uh, then uh, uh, of course when I first went in, I lived at a hotel, mm -hmm. and uh, then uh, then I got uh, married in 1941, and uh, bought a home mm -hmm. out in. Uh, um, Manhasset, Long Island, and uh, well, in, lived in apartments. In, in 1941, uh, while doing all this in Chicago, you bought a home in Long Island. Uh, Manhasset, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. And uh, and then uh, I lived at the. Uh, um, I was trying to think of the name of that hotel on the beach. Can't think of the name of the hotel right now, but that was before I was married. Uh -huh. and after we were married, well, I bought a home. And uh, you think of the Edgewater Beach Hotel? No. Are, 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 trying, no, uh, are we in New York I, or in Chicago? No, in Chicago. Yeah, but when you said Long Island. No, I, I said Manhasset. Wait a minute. No. Oh, we got you. You're right. We got you. I mean, we pulled oh, you in yeah. there. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, um, oh me, where was it? Uh, out. Uh, in the suburbs of Chicago, uh -huh. can't, can't probably in the north side, out in Saugenash or uh, uh, Edgebrook or somewhere out. In, uh, I can't think of the name of the place to save me. See, I told you, you know, <laughs> you, you know. After all, when you get over seventy, you, uh, you, oh, you're you know, not over seventy. Seventy. I'll be seventy-three September 9th. Well, happy birthday! Thank you. I would say uh, Captain Midnight looks just as well as he ever did. Oh well, uh -huh. not exactly. <laughs> When when you moved uh, at the end uh, of the about early fifties, you said you moved to New York. Then now, did you have additional opportunities in radio at that time to go to New York? A lot of things were moving from Chicago. I well, no, that no nothing that, uh, uh, that I, I went uh, went to New York uh, um, with the idea that I had to make a move. I mean, I, I felt that I did, and uh, I of course I had a lot of people that I knew in advertising agencies. Mm -hmm that were there mm -hmm. uh, that knew of my record and background. So I didn't have as much of a problem in uh, uh, moving from Chicago to New York as I, as I might have had. Mm -hmm. So what did you do then when you got to New York? What kind of work were you doing? Mostly, was television was starting at this time. That's right, well. that's right. Uh, well, I did uh, TV on Guiding Light. And... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, no, did, did commercials, you, a lot, of, a, an awful yeah. lot of voiceover commercials. Did you do the same character in Guiding Light on TV as you did That's on right. radio? That's right. Yeah. And uh, 
Was there any? Could you perceive any reaction from viewers? Uh, did they, you know, who would recognize your voice from radio? No, was there any any response no, at all? They, no. they just accepted you right in that role. No, no, no. That's good. There wasn't very uh, after uh, on TV. There was very little uh, response from uh, audiences. I mean, that, that we received as mm-hmm. actors. Mm-hmm. On this. Mm-hmm. Now, when you did uh, get involved in, in television, even more so. Where, didn't you play the judge in a uh, long-running uh, series? Weren't you a, a night court uh, judge or something no. of that nature? I swear uh, that I remember you in, in robes as a, as a judge in some television series. Or really, I don't, uh, I don't uh, recall that. Uh, let's see. That's, uh, Mostly were you... Well, I came out here in 57. In 57. Yeah. And you've done a lot of work on on television and in some feature films. Yes, uh, I've nothing great or anything, just just parts, and so I don't even remember the films. Mm. But you've been working regularly oh, yes. all that time. Up until uh, this, uh, just this past year. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, uh, well, what it is is it's a perfectly natural thing. I mean, when I was younger, and uh, I made contacts with the advertising people. We had lunch together. We Mm -hmm. did this and that. And uh, so I got called. But, uh, and that's why uh, most of the things today on voiceover things are being done by younger people. Except unless you happen to have a very big name in television Mm -hmm. or in pictures in which you will be called, as you can have seen, uh, doing commercials. But a person like me who's background has been mostly radio and uh, a little TV uh, I don't get the, I, I have a good agent and get called in but uh, uh, I find out that uh, well the time has come when uh, what the heck I, I don't have too much to worry about so everything's all right and I uh, I don't try too hard <laughs> if something comes along why well, fine well you've worked hard over uh, a great many years uh, and you did a good job with it too well you thank, know. thank you and I uh, it was a lot of fun and uh, something that uh, you just don't forget. I know that uh, so many people who enjoyed Captain Midnight and uh, some of the other things for so many years uh, would want me to thank you for all of your efforts in those areas because uh, you did a good job with it. In closing, I'd like to tell you, which I don't think I mentioned, that uh, in this period of time when I haven't been doing too much, all of a sudden I found out I could write poetry. Ah. So I have written about 300 poems, not for publication or anything, mm-hmm. but this is an example of the first one I wrote. Please, God, guide me in what I do and say on this important interview today. Give me confidence and pride in what I know. But if I should brag a bit, please don't let it show. <laughs> well, uh, you didn't. Uh, and we thank you very much, Ed Prentice, for your, okay, uh, and your I've, time I've, today. I've uh, got two or three poems here that you can uh, read uh, at your spare time. Oh, fine. And Maybe we thank can you for find the publisher. <laughs> thank you for being so kind as to be interested. Oh, we are that indeed. Thanks, Ed Prentice. You bet.